Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart audio podcast. For more information on Ransomed Heart Ministries, our resources, and events, please visit us online at www.ransomedheart.com. Welcome to yes. the Handsome Heart Podcast. Welcome. Welcome. We've okay. got Chris Hatch, <laughs> give me your, give me Craig your... McConnell. Hey. Who's in charge? Me. Okay. Welcome to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. If you've been listening in, you know we're we're in a series. We're listening in on some of the excerpts of the topics of our boot camp. It's part of the Wild at Heart Boot Camp Platinum Collection. And today the topic is the new name. Um Gosh, when we've done boot camp, um, the wound and healing of the wound is is probably one of the, the high points in the weekend. And this session is really just a, a continuation of how we're healed from the wound. Um, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. A couple of things I know for sure God is doing uh, in this room is... Um, God is, God is after our hearts. He wants to win and fight for our our love and compassion, and to set us free and to rescue us from from all the the things that entangle us and preoccupy us and distract us. God is committed to this journey that we're on of making us whole. I mean, it won't be fully done till heaven. There will always have an ache and a groaning and, and for life as we were designed to live, but won't know until we're in his presence. But though we have that ache and that hurt, um, we also experience the beauty, the power, and the reality of the gospel here and now, and that whatever our circumstances, and no matter how painful or disappointing relationships are, There is a God who sustains us, comforts us, strengthens us, and gives us some ability to face eye to eye the realities of this life. Not just face them, but to make a difference in the lives of others. I mean, he is is committed to my being a finished man. Craig McConnell, in so many ways, is a wreck. I'm a ruin. I'm a mess. Now, don't let my stunning performance up here uh, <laughs> keep you from knowing that. I mean, spend, spend some time with me. Uh, if these guys were free and I wasn't around to tell you about the man, Craig McConnell, they would share some wonderful things I'd love to hear and I have heard. But they were really honest. They would point to the unfinished things, the battles, the, the, the places that just aren't done yet. And my wife would. And my children would. God knows my neighbor would. <laughs> and I'd feel a whole lot better about him if he returned the lawnmower. But I'm an unfinished man, and God is committed to taking you from wherever you are or have been to to something more, deeper, and richer. And there's always more. There is always more. I mean, there's no static state walking with God. I mean, there's just more and more and more. More to learn about loving, more to give to others, more to learn about Him that makes us fall on our face. There's... There's more difficulties, trials, disruptions to teach us how to battle, to fight, and lead us away from the life and places we look other than Him. God is committed to finishing the work He began in you. I know that's true. You know what else is true? As God is invading this world, God is invading this world, going after people, the hurt, the brokenhearted, the destitute, the lost, to go after those who are just resigned, those who are trying so hard to make life work and to prove that they're a man. God is invading this world, and God is about changing this world. That's the second thing. Now, here's the question. Who is God using in his great invasion? 
Wait, did you just hear what some of you said? Us. Us. Now, wait a second. Let's be honest here. Aren't we the racks? Aren't we the ones who need more healing, more deliverance, who need to learn to walk with God, our faith grow, learn how to battle and fight more and more effectively? It's an amazing truth. I love it. In one of John's books, he paints this picture, and it just has stuck with me. I love it. And it's, it's God is about an invasion. And picture the landing craft just crashing ashore on the continent that God is invading, this kingdom under the ruler of darkness. And these ships are coming in, and the, the front of the boats fall down, and God's army storms out. And you know what God's army looks like? I mean, there's Mrs. Evans in a third grade class. There's some guy with a beach chair and a book. There's three Navy SEALs. They know what they're doing. It's a couple guys in uniforms but don't have any gun. You know, and there's some funky looking guys eating Chinese food out of a container. And it's like, this is God's invasion force? This is his army? It's like, you're kidding. Man, I suspect that many of us here believe because we're unfinished, we have no place in his kingdom plan and role. I mean, isn't your perception like mine? That once God heals me, delivers me, fixes me all up, and I'm holy, that then I'm usable in his army? Doesn't that seem true? Could it be, could it be that while God is at work, in your life, one of the works he wants to accomplish is for you to see yourself as you really are. And who and what you really are is a man who can make a difference, who's a warrior, who a man who is part of an army that can change the world. I mean, men, that ragtag group, the victorious army. I'm looking. I'm looking at a very similar army. Now, what's incredible is that God is changing the world to people like us. From guys who are rack, for guys who were told you're nothing but a seagull. All you do is shit, squawk, and sit. You have nothing to say. You have nothing to contribute. Just set off in the corner and crap on stuff. And I believe that message. And I live most of my life, even as a pastor for decades, believing that I had nothing to say. Um, It's always been the case that God uses men who don't feel qualified or up to the task. Abram, he was 99 years old, and the Lord appeared to him and said, I have this covenant with you, and I want you to be the father of many nations. And from you, many kings will rise, and from you, many nations will be blessed. But I'm going to change your name from Abram to Abraham. And Abraham means a father of multitudes. Now, Abram is 99 years old. His wife is barren. God comes to him and says, you're going to be the father of many And I'm going to give you that name, Father of Multitudes. You know Abram's response, right? (laughs) Started laughing. (laughs) Lord, I'm 99 years old. Um, You've seen my wife. She's old. She doesn't bear children anymore. (laughs) But God says, you will be the Father of Multitudes. And I'm going to rename you from Abram to Abraham. Gideon. Gideon is hiding in the rocks and the caves from the enemies of the land. The Midianites would raid the land. They'd rape it. They'd burn it. They'd steal everything, eat everything. And Gideon, I mean, he's hiding in the rocks, and he's threshing wheat. And God comes to Gideon while he's in this wine press in the rocks, and he says, mighty warrior. Now, Gideon didn't believe it. He did a whole 
assortment of tasks for God to prove that it was God and that it was true. But God says, mighty warrior to a man hiding. Interesting name. Um, David. Samuel is looking for the next king of Israel. God directs him to look at the sons of Jesse. Jesse, knowing that Samuel comes, brings out his best son, the most qualified son to be king, Eliab. Samuel looks at him and says, no, it's not him. And Samuel looks at seven sons of Jesse and senses that none of these seven men shall be the king. And Samuel asks Jesse, is this all the sons you have? Are there no others? And he says, well, I do have another son. He's kind of the runt. I didn't mean bring him out because, you know, he's out tending sheep. Guess who was the one God wanted to name king? And that's that passage where a man looks on the outward, God looks upon the heart. God has this way of using men who feel unqualified, not up to it. They feel like they don't have what it takes. Moses, God comes to him, he's out tending sheep and says, you're going to be the one who delivers my people from the mightiest force on earth. And Moses' response is, uh, you know, hey, who am I? Hey, wait a second, me? Moses is now the deliverer. What a name. We could go on and on. We could look at uh, uh, Jeremiah, Solomon, when he's about to be anointed king and he's blown away that he has been chosen to be king of God's people in this great land and this wonderful people. You know what his response is? He says, me? And in um, uh, was it First Kings 3, he says, I'm only a little child. I don't know how to do this. And that's when he asks for a wise and discerning heart. He's asking for that because his view of himself is, I'm just a kid. I don't know what I'm doing. You're my man. Um, Men, God has given us each a name. God has given us an identity. And Chesterton, G.K. Chesterton, said that we're all under the same mental calamity. We've all forgotten our names. We've all forgotten what we really are. Man, I think amnesia, spiritual amnesia, just fills us. We don't know who we are. We have forgotten who we are. Do you know who you are? Who would you say you are? How would you answer that question? Who are you? We just heard that session at boot camp, this point in the weekend. What do you guys kind of sense what's going on with the men? Craig, I think it's just a a beautiful time because the men are are really realizing there's more. Mm -hmm. And it seems like uh, there's something out there that with a walking relationship with God that can help them, Mm -hmm. you know, and spending time after listening to the new name session at boot camp, you know, going out and spending time alone with God and asking and listening. Um, it might be the first time that they've ever done that before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it just feels like an opportunity to step into a new way of living with God. And I feel like it's pretty pivotal in in the weekend, um, this point before they step into the next sessions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Craig, your teaching and John's teaching on this is incredibly powerful. I've been sitting under it for over 10 years now at boot camps. And, you know, it takes me to John chapter 8 where um, the gospel says those that belong to God hear what God says. Mm -hmm. And there is something powerful that happens at a boot camp that's irreversible. Mm -hmm. Chris, as you mentioned, when a man turns to listen to God, Mm, to hear from him, of what God thinks of him, of what that unique expression is that God has set in his heart as a man. And so I think this session um, in this message really has started a revolution in the hearts of many men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 
the whole weekend builds topic on topic and God showing up. It, mm-hmm. Just listening to these again, just I just sense God's work. Mm-hmm. And you know what? There really is so much more out there. What you just listened to is a small excerpt from the new name and to hear more of teaching from Craig. And actually in the Platinum Collection, this resource, you get to hear teaching from John. You get to hear a conversation, the men just discussing what it's like. When did they hear their name from God? Did they hear their name from God? And uh, if you want to hear more about that, I really suggest that you check that out. The new name is a small part of the Wild at Heart Boot Camp Platinum Collection. And you can purchase that right now at ransomedheart.com slash platinum collection. For more resources related, if you're interested in leading groups or studying, going deeper, books, audios, video, check out all of our resources at ransomedheart.com.